Hey folks, Dan Frio here with your real estate update for January 24th, 2024. So today we have finally some economic news coming in that the Federal Reserve will be paying attention to. Unfortunately, it came in good, so that's bad news. So without further ado, let's get over to it. So these are the top six products people use when they're buying their first house. These are not my rates and how these rates are computed. Mortgage News Daily surveys lenders all over the country and asks them these five questions. If you had a first time home buyer looking to buy their primary home and it's a single family home. So you're probably saying, Dan, that's me. Well, yep, that's probably you. But the next two pieces of this puzzle is probably not you. People have a 780 credit score and they're putting down 25%. I have, I've been doing this a long, long time. I don't see a lot of people with 780 credit scores and really nobody putting down 25%. But if that's you, these are probably where your rates are. If that's not you, I'm going to give you all my information at the end of this video so you can reach out to me to figure out what kind of rate do you, would you qualify for or do you even qualify uh, for anything. So my name is Dan Frio. I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico, and I'd love to work with you. Like I said, I'll give you my information at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's get to the economic news right through here. Here's what we have manufacturing. That's what we want to focus in on right now. Tomorrow is going to be GDP and the employment numbers. And then on Friday, we're going to get the PCE, which is the biggest component or the biggest uh, inflationary factor that the Federal Reserve watches. But today we have the manufacturing numbers. And you can see right through here, the previous number was 47.9. It was expected to stay right steady at 47.9. It bumped up to 50.3. Now, why 50 is a big number is anything 50 or above means the, the manufacturing uh, part of our country is really starting to uh, boost. Okay, it's starting to be, you know, grow. You see the servicing PMI, it went from 51 to 52.9. So that means it's even growing that much more. So here's why, here's why this is a big to do. It's good news because it's saying our manufacturing uh, in this country is starting to pick up. That's driving the Federal Reserve nuts. And here's the context behind this. The Federal Reserve is saying, okay, what's, we need to put cure inflation. We saw inflation about a year and a half ago at 9%. So they started raising rates exponentially higher and higher and higher to cool off people's spending because inflation is basically what? It's, it's the prices of goods going up. What causes prices to go up? It's too much demand for a product. So if you have too much demand for a product and you don't have enough of that product to satisfy everybody, the prices go up till you hit an equilibrium, okay? So why this is driving the Federal Reserve nuts is they're saying, okay, we're doing everything we can to raise rates to cool down the economy. It's still clicking on all cylinders. So the context behind this is people had way too much money during COVID. Okay, plus we had a supply chain issue. If you don't agree with me on that, let's go over to this chart right here. Okay, this is the consumer disposable income throughout the, you know, I can go back 25 years or so. But what I did is I pulled up the last 10 years of consumer, me and you, our disposable income. If you see through here, people would save over the years. 2014, people save, save, because you want a better life for you and your family. So you try to save as much as you can. So through 2014, you, you have this you know steady little increase. Then all of a sudden, what happened? Bam, this thing just spiked out the roof. And then a year later, it spiked even higher to the highest levels. We can go back here. Let's go to the max calculator. This is the highest levels we ever seen in history. Well, what happened during this time frame right here? Okay. If you weren't under a rock, it was COVID. Okay, so how did people get so much money during COVID uh, to, to cause this spike in disposable income? Well, think about it. You were tucked in your home. You couldn't leave. Okay, but most of us continued to work, continued to get paid. A lot of people got stimulus money, uh, much of that. So that's what caused this spike. If you disagree with me, these are the Federal Reserve charts. Okay, so you can't really disagree with me on this and these spikes. Okay, at the same time, we had uh, supply chain issues. So you have less goods and people with more money. What are they going to do? Keep buying and buying and buying. That drove up the prices. Okay, so that's what the Federal Reserve is trying to curtail. But then when you start seeing you know, the jobs reports that we're seeing tomorrow, that's really not coming in favor for the Federal Reserve because the Federal Reserve wants more and more people to basically lose their jobs. So we don't have the money to buy these goods and services. That's what they're thinking. Okay. So jobs reports coming out tomorrow. We're going to see how robust the, the jobs market is. But right now, the manufacturing index, if the manufacturing is going up and up and up, people need more stuff. That means people are going to get hired and more people are also going to make more money. They're going to get raises. 
So this is basically in counterintuitive to what the Federal Reserve is trying to do. Okay, so that's the context behind all these numbers. So again, the manufacturing numbers are coming in better than expected. Tomorrow, we're going to get a GDP to see how the economy in, in, a, in a whole is doing. And then we're going to start getting numbers on jobs and the inflationary numbers that the Federal Reserve really, really monitors. We're going to have that on Thursday and Friday. So that's, that's what we're looking for there. Based on this data, what's the markets doing? The stock market we talk about sometimes. Dow Jones is liking this data, NAS or NASDAQ's liking it, and S&P's liking it. We go over to bonds, the bond market. Uh, the bond markets is coming down a little bit, but this number was a little bit lower than this previously. So let's get over to the bond market that we watch. So what I watch on a daily basis is this is one of my computer monitors on a daily basis. You might ask why, Dan, this is a lot of data. Well, it gives me a ton of stuff. You know, we went over the economic calendar right here, but my economic calendar has that much more. Okay, this is the economic calendar I watch. So I'm not going to go through each one of these. I kind of summarize it for you there. What we try to figure out on this channel is what in the heck is going to go on with mortgage rates? Okay, so how do we do that? Do we watch the 10-year treasury? Do we watch the stock market? Do we figure out what the Federal Reserve is going to do? Well, we watch this right here. This is an MBS. What this MBS stands for, it's a mortgage-backed security. It's a mortgage-backed security. It's a bond that trades on Wall Street. That's yield on this thing is the biggest component of your mortgage rate. So that's why we watch this. Okay, what you're seeing right here is the price of the bond and then the reaction that's happening right now. You can see there was a huge drop today. So what I need you guys to understand is this: these numbers right here. If this number right here, if the number's going up, that's good news. Price of a bond going up, that means the yield or the interest rate that you're paying because it's a mortgage bond is coming down. So we like when the prices go up. If you look at the long-term chart, you go back three months, we basically went from down here where rates were 8%. We rallied, 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 rallied all the way up to basically right through here where rates are about six and a half. And now we come down and rates are teetering on 7%. But if you look at today's number, you're seeing this, it crashed. When did it crash? This number right through here, basically crashed when this data came out. So people were expecting, okay, is the, is the manufacturing index going to come down, meaning less, you know, there's, there's less products being produced. That means people are buying less. That means we don't need as many people working. Well, no, it actually came in better than expected. Thus, we had a huge drop in the bond price. So what happens when the bond price goes down? Rates go up. So today we're seeing rates basically just stabilizing on this data. Now, tomorrow and Friday, huge data coming out. Like I said, we're going to start getting the jobs reports, uh, the PCE, which the, is the Federal Reserve's number one inflation number that they're looking at. That's the data that's coming out. So between today and Friday, there's going to be big movements in the market. So I, I, I grant you, or I would love to for you guys to watch me on a daily basis to figure out what's going on based on all this. So if you're a realtor, you need to know this stuff, guys. If you're a consumer looking to buy a house, this is detrimental to you because rates can move a quarter percent in a day. So that quarter percent can increase your payments by maybe a hundred bucks. Okay, so a lot more than you think. So uh, this is what we do on a daily basis. But my name and what I do is basically, my name is Dan Frio. And I do this video on a daily basis to make you guys informed of real estate and how to buy real estate in today's market, if that's what you're looking to do. I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico, and I'd love to help you. There's two things we're doing helping people with right now. If you've locked in at a rate, um, we can actually uh, kind of compare your rate with up to, we had just added about 10 new lenders. So we're up to over 70 different lenders we can compare your rates with. So you can send me your loan estimate, it's right through there. Upload your loan estimate in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare your loan estimate, your rate and your fees to up to 70 different of the country's largest lenders to see, can we get you a lower rate? Can we get you lower fees? Maybe we can do all the above. We can get you lower rate and fees. But if you're out there and you're like, hey, Dan, I'd really like to buy a house in 2024 or maybe my first investment property, really don't know what to do. I'd need some help. There's three ways to get in touch with us. One, click the apply now button. It's a little bit different than most. What it's going to do is it's going to ask you a series of questions. Based on those answers to those questions, we're going to set you up with a mortgage specialist that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. Okay, but what you can also do while you're at the rate update, you can check out all of our uh, tools up at the top, but you can also reach out to us directly. 
How you do that? Well, scroll down. You're going to see blogs, mortgage calculators, and the such. Then when you get down to the bottom right through here, whoo, that just made me dizzy. You can get our 800 number, which is 844-775-LOAN. Or you can reach me by email at dan at the rate update.com. And yes, that is me. And that will be me as the one answering back to you guys, answering all your questions. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, we will not be live today. Uh, Kyle COVID, or Kyle, he does have COVID of Win the House You Love, and he's with me. Uh, he has COVID and he's out for this week. We won't be doing our live event, but if you want to learn more about real estate, please don't forget to subscribe down below the subscribe button. And we got a lot of tools down in the comments or the description section. Check those out as well. You might find those helpful. So thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.